Hey guys, welcome back to another Budget Tips and Techniques video today, but before we get into that, be sure to check out our Facebook, Twitter, and our own website, all links down in the description for you to check out. And while you're at it, be sure to hit that subscribe and bell notification so you can stay updated on future uploads like this, as well as Chris Talks, Tech Reviews, and our very own short films. And if you enjoy the video, be sure to smash that like button. Now today, let's go ahead and get talking about some ways to further advance your filmmaking skills while saving you a few extra bucks. So today we're talking about recording sound and we are going to start right off with different mic or different microphones, their uses and their quality. So to start off with, we're going to start off with the built-in camera microphones. I do have mine going on my C100 right now. I'm going to switch over to it. You can tell it's obviously not the best quality. It's very situational. I use Canon for all of my cameras, so obviously they're not very well known for their built-in microphones being like the best quality. They're usually just used for scratch or reference audio so you can sync it up later in post because right now I'm recording on my Zoom H4n audio recorder and I have it or my Rode NTG4 hooked up to it and I'm just using the Canon C100 audio to match up with this and sync it together so that I can use this audio without having to plug into that camera. Next up on the list is you're going to be your phone microphones. You know, just simple, your microphones that are on the bottom of your phones or wherever they're at. Um, you can get apps on here that record just audio. You can just use your camera, hit record on that, and then just take the audio from it later in editing. Um, this usually, this can be a little bit better if I'm using it, like if I'm holding it like right here and I were recording it, I'm not doing it right now. But if I were to do that, you'd be able to hear the audio and it wouldn't be too bad. For the most part, smartphones nowadays, their built-in microphones aren't terrible. Uh, they can be good for stuff like vlogging and whatnot. But for the most part, I would recommend not using these so much for films unless it's really all you got. Then, I mean, go for it. Once again, just make sure that you're getting as close as you can to your subject or whatever it is you're trying to record for the best quality audio. Um, and after that is your audio recorders. A lot of the times, audio recorders, especially with Zoom, they'll have built-in stereo microphones that you can use to record audio. I usually don't because, once again, they're not the best quality you can get if that's all your budget can afford. It's just an audio recorder with built-in microphone. They do work well. I have used them before, uh, like in the short film My Story that I did with Platinum Productions. All of my audio was recorded with just this built-in speaker right here. So it does work well if you use it correctly and it can work in a pinch. Um, but ultimately your best option is going to be using a shotgun microphone like I am right now with my Rodan TG4. I have also in the past used my Audio or Audio Technica ATR 6550 up there on my shelf. That was actually the first one I started with and I upgraded to the Rode video mic. Uh, they have an entire, Rode has an entire video mic series, uh, like video micro, video mic go, video mic, or, and then, uh, your video mic pro and pro plus. Take a look at all of them. They're all 3.5 millimeter inputs. Most of them require batteries. Uh, but they do do the job pretty well, typically best for vlogging or just quick type videos, not so much for stuff like this or short films, but they can still work. Um, and then you've got your higher end lines like the Rode NTG4. You can find other brands like Sennheiser does good stuff. Audio Technica has some other shotgun mics with really good quality to them. So just kind of do your research on that, find the stuff that works for you. Personally, I myself, I'm a Rode guy. I am not sponsored or endorsed by them in any means. I just, I really love their products and their quality is always amazing no matter which mic from them that I use. And they always seem to have stuff in the really good budget range that actually produces insanely good quality like i recently just used the rodent g4 on my short film spent i use it in all of these videos now it's just superb quality for a really good budget price and if you'd like to check it out i also have done a review on the rodent tg4 and the road video mics so if you want to go check those out uh, i'll have them linked down in the description for you you can go take a peek at them and see if either of those mics are good for you um, and then aside from shotgun mics and all the other microphones listed are uh, condenser microphones which are just your typical handheld like these guys right here, stuff you usually see in interviews and podcasts, stuff like that. That's the, that's the best situation for them typically. These I'm using more as decoration just because they were cheap and they, well, they came with my Zoom H4n. Uh, they're like, it's like a $20 kit for two of these and a receiver. So they're not the best quality and I tend not to use them, but they're cool. Um, like I said, for if you get some good ones for podcasts or interviews or like on the go videos, if you've got someone else operating the camera and you've got a wireless receiver to the camera and you've got one of those, they work pretty good for that. I tend not to use them too much because I don't really have much of an application for them. Like I said, they're a very situational thing. Um, 
And then there's also lavalier mics, which are the microphones that clip directly onto your subjects or whatever it is you're recording. They're typically best for dialogue and they you hide them out of frame. They work really great for when shotguns can't really fit in the shot or they can't get close enough to your subjects to get that good audio. So sometimes throwing in a lav is actually exactly what you need. And they can still record really good audio. I've just got a $20, I think, Sony lavalier mic that does pretty much everything that I need when my shotgun can't handle it. Now let's go ahead and actually get into recording dialogue. Like I just previously mentioned, shotgun microphones are typically going to be your best friends. Uh, and when you go about using them, you're going to want to get them as close to your subjects as you can. Like I've got mine, like just right here, just out of frame. Literally the tip of my finger is where the end of the microphone is. Sorry, I kind of bumped it a little bit there, so it probably made a little bit of noise. But like I mentioned, you're going to want to get it as close to your subject as possible, whatever it is you're trying to get audio of. Um, point it directly at them like I've got it literally pointing directly at my mouth to get the best sounding audio that I possibly can out of the situation. Obviously there's some echo in the room just because of the way that it's built. It was originally a garage so it's kind of hard to nail down the exact audio and echo control that I really want but for the most part this thing is handling it like a champ and I absolutely love it. Um, and you can boom from above, below, to the sides. You can really do it from any angle as long as you're keeping it out of frame and you're still getting the good quality audio from pointing directly at them and getting them as close as possible. And you will need a dedicated operator when your subject is moving, but if your subject is just sitting still, you can just throw it on a tripod. I've got it on one right now that's actually, like I said, just on a stand pointed directly at me. But if I were walking around and stuff, I would need someone dedicated to actually operating the boom and making sure that it stays with me the whole time and tracking me to get the best possible audio. I usually just have one of my friends do it on short films because they don't mind. It's actually a really easy job. Once again, just keeping the mic as close to the actor as possible, pointed directly at them and keeping it out of frame is going to be like the best thing you can do. I also recommend using a windscreen at all time. Most shock and microphones come provided with a windscreen. Um, just one of these little guys right here. Well, this is a dead cat actually. I've got, I've got the windscreen right here. It's just a very simple windscreen, like I said, that comes with the microphone. Um, and then I've got a separate dead cat as well that I can throw on top of this to get some extra wind protection or extra static protection. Um, I also actually have my microphone inside of my Rode Blimp right now. If your budget permits for that, I highly recommend a Blimp as well. It decreases so much of the outside noise that you don't want and narrows in on exactly what you're looking for. And it's just, it's super handy to have. I think in Spent, there were moments where I had like four layers of wind protection because I had the windscreen, I had the dead cat, I had the Blimp, and then uh, actually this dead wombat that covers my Blimp for when it gets extra windy outside and whatnot, or if you just need that one extra layer of protection to get rid of that outside noise. All super handy stuff. Once again, it's an if your budget permits though. For all I know, your budget might not even permit for the shotgun microphone, so we're gonna go through some other options for you that still work just as well. So obviously, like I mentioned before, using a lavalier mic for certain situations, clipping it to an actor, uh, say if they're in a distant shot, like if you're in a wide shot and you can't get the boom microphone in close enough to get good audio without it getting in the shot, might you just have to throw the audio recorder in your subject's pocket and plug in the lavalier directly to that and just have it record directly to the device like that. Uh, doing a sync clap, obviously, so you can make sure that everything's synced up in the end. I did use this in standalone during the bedroom scene just because I was operating the camera from across the room handheld like this and I wasn't really close enough to use the shotgun mic I had mounted on top. So I just grabbed my Zoom H1 really quick, my lavalier mic, tossed it under the bed. You might be able to see the cable a little bit in the shot actually, but for the most part, it actually got the audio really well. It got their voices like really good. You couldn't even really tell that I was using it. It just, it worked out really nicely. So like I said, there are very certain situations where lavalier mics are like absolutely perfect. You really can use them for any shot. Um, if you're just operating the camera on your own and you have to move freely and you don't have a tripod stand or someone's moving or something, you might just have to hook up a lav mic anyways. They are really handy to have. I definitely recommend carrying one or two in there. You can get some really good ones for really cheap. Like I said, I only have a $20 Sony one that does really well, captures really good audio, especially plugged directly into an audio recorder. And then obviously if you need to get really creative, you can just use your, like I said, you can use phones just holding it up to your subjects if you can get it close enough, hide it out of frame, 
use that to record some of your audio if you don't have an audio recorder or something. So little things like that can work. There's also some more tips that I can get into for talking to you guys about sound effects. But right now we're just talking about dialogue. So while you're recording dialogue, this really goes for recording any audio. Make sure that you're monitoring the volume and the quality of it. Uh, most devices like the Zoom H4n Pro will have a readout on the screen here that will tell you your exact decibel level. Um, you want to keep it generally around the minus 12 decibel area because that's roughly where you're going to be to the point where you're not going to be peaking and you have to turn it down and post and it just sounds all muddy. And you also won't be too quiet to the point where you have to bring it up and post and you get all that static in there. So keep an eye out for that. And then also be sure to listen to your audio. Uh, for most devices will have a headphone jack that you can plug some headphones into and listen to the live audio feed. If you can, definitely do that. If you can't, test it out uh, and then play it back and listen to it and see if you need to make any adjustments to it. Um, so that way you can listen for any sort of background noises or echoes or anything that you need to manage, certain things like that. And if you're using headphones, I recommend getting some comfortable ones and some good sounding ones, obviously, because if you're going to be wearing them for long duration, you want them to be comfy so it's not like hurting your ears and just making you in a really uncomfortable position. And then also get some good sounding ones because you want to have the audio that you're hearing as accurate to what you're recording as possible so you can tell how it will sound in post or at least get a rough idea uh, just in case you need to change anything on the spot or re-record or whatever. And when it comes to managing echo and background noise, I do recommend, uh, like I mentioned before, having the windscreen to prevent stuff like that if you're using a shotgun microphone uh, or carry extra fabrics with you like towels, rugs, and blankets and just stuff like that in general, just things that you can use to uh, manage the sound around you like placing down some rugs on floors or just towels on walls and stuff to help manage some echo uh, or you can even hold like a blanket or a towel up next to the microphone to block some extra wind if it's really heavy certain things like that. Always be sure or be aware of your surroundings as well. Do a couple of tests before you actually start recording to test for echo or any temporary background noises. Like say you're out on a street and if there's cars passing by, be ready to hold for sound while recording, uh, which means you're just gonna have to pause what you're doing and wait until that sound passes to go back to it. But I actually had to do that during spent. We were out on the street and we had cars going by all the time. And... Hold for sound. We constantly had to hold for sound because the cars were always louder than my actors and I really didn't want to have to deal with that in post because that's a really hard thing to fix if not impossible. So uh, once again, just kind of paying attention to those general things and that's why I recommend wearing the headphones so you can hear the things like that going on. Even if there's like a train yard off in the distance making a lot of noise that happened in the last scene of Spent. Tight ass. I've been a prick. And I've learned through this um, few past hours that no, you got, just got to sit back and enjoy life. And I didn't really catch it on, on the set, so it kind of suffered a little bit, and I fixed it up as much as I could in post, but there really wasn't all that much I could do. It kind of drowned out my actors' voices a little bit, and it kind of sucked, and I really didn't want to do ADR because ADR is extremely difficult and is super obvious a lot of the times. And also, on your location, try to turn off as many electronics around you as possible because they tend to interfere with the microphone signal and it will start to produce like a static or a hum that can be barely noticeable or it can be just noticeable enough to really bug people. So keeping a mindful eye of that, like I'm in a room right now where I've got my laptop going, I've got my phone on, I have a TV and a bunch of consoles all over there. Thankfully I've got all those turned off right now. I've got a fireplace over here. So I make sure I've got all those turned off so I don't have to worry about their digital signals interfering with my microphone at all so I can keep the best quality possible and not have to worry about the static or hum later on. And if you have one, be sure to take advantage of a high pass filter or a low cut filter. They're extremely useful to have. It can help you narrow down to the exact frequencies that you want. Uh, like I mentioned earlier, if you're out on a busy street or something, or there's just a bunch of background noises, say there's like some motors running in the background or whatever right now, I could turn on a low cut or a high pass filter and it would cut out some of those frequencies and kind of narrow it down to just my voice so that the majority of what is being recorded into this microphone is my voice and that's like the most prominent thing, the best sounding thing. It tries to really eliminate all else. So if you have those filters, definitely use them if the situation really needs them. If you start to notice any of that kind of stuff going on, 
try swapping out one of those filters really quick, maybe adjusting the frequencies if possible, and just kind of playing around with it until you get the sound that you really like. And then really for any type of recording in film, whether it be for video or audio, make sure you do several takes. Uh, this really gives you a lot more to work with in post. Try doing different takes at, uh, like, like do them differently so you're not just repeating the same things over and over and it's all basically the same. Try doing some different stuff because uh, like I said, it gives you more to work with and you'll actually be surprised sometimes on what you end up deciding on works best in post because the take that you thought was the best on set might not work the best when it comes to the final cut. It might be one that you thought wasn't as good that actually flows best with the film and keeps things on pace. So it's, it's kind of one of those detail type things you got to look out for. Uh, just paying attention, like I said, doing several takes, like do at least four or five good takes, uh, like I said, all different versions of it, so you can kind of have different options to work with when it comes to actually editing it. Just makes life that much easier. Alrighty, in the next part of this video, we're going to be covering recording sound effects and Foley for your film. Uh, I like to start off, this is usually after you get the rough edit of the film put together. I go through and I pay attention to every little detail in the film, every little thing that I expect to hear, uh, including ambience and whatnot. I write all of those in and then I even write in a few extras just to be safe that I think might be necessary for the film. Because, like I said, you never know exactly what you're going to need to throw in there until you actually get to that point in the editing process. And you don't want to get there and be like, oh, it would really be that much better if I had this in there or if I added that sort of thing. So try to come as prepared as you can, really. And like I said, always remember to write down ambience into that list as well. And then also list any items that you might need for recording sound effects, like any special surfaces, if you need like sand, gravel, uh, or wood, etc. Or any props that you might need, anything that might be like dropped, shuffled, or clicked, or anything like that. Stuff like pillows, glasses, keyboards, etc. Just little things like that. Get all those on the list as well. Gather them all together, everything that you can anyways. You might have to get a little creative with some of your sound effects. Uh, like for Behind That Smile, I had a sound effect where I needed to have the sound of a locker, or a lock on a locker rotating. And I didn't have one of those, so I had to get a wind-up toy, record that sound, and then when I took it into post, I just adjusted the speed of it and the freak, or the pitch of it, and it actually worked out just fine. I think it worked out perfect i've i did that for virtually home too for the mouse wheel scrolling i didn't have a mouse wheel sound effect so i ended up using a fish rod someone reeling in a fish rod changed the frequency of that and everything and it worked out great so sometimes you got to get creative with that sort of thing and then when it comes to actually recording it you're going to want to find an enclosed space that has minimum echo and whatnot uh, if you need to follow the steps i listed in the last section about reducing echo or background noise you can those will apply here as well try to get the room as silent as you can get all of your stuff lined up and set up and then when you actually go to record it um either throw the best thing to use is a shotgun microphone either throw it on a stand or have someone else operate it and then like i mentioned before do several takes of each sound effect do it at like different paces different intensities different volumes like i said so you've got more to work with when it comes to the final edit really giving yourself as many options as you can when it comes to the editing process is huge and editors will love you for life and then for recording ambient sound, either go to the location that you were actually shooting the film at, uh, just get your microphone and record however much time you need, and then I'd say give yourself an extra 30 seconds wiggle room so you've got more to work with just in case. And then, uh, or if that place doesn't have the exact ambient sound that you're looking for, like say you want ambient sound for a busy street, but the place you were recording at is just kind of one of those side streets that hardly gets any attention, then maybe go to one of the main streets with the audio or with the microphone recorder and whatnot and record sound from there for a little bit and throw that into your film at the end. And then personally, I like to save all sound effects that I record, whether it be on set or afterwards. I save that into a Foley library for future projects just in case because you never know when you're going to need them. Like, I can't even tell you how many times I've recorded uh, me, like, walking on grass or gravel or something. And then I just save those into my library because I use them for one film, but I know that in the future I'm going to end up needing those sound effects again. So I just save them. I title them to make sure I can find them quickly and easily. And life is all good. 
So anyways, I think that's really all I got for you guys today on this budget tips and techniques. If you enjoyed it, once again, be sure to smash that like button, hit that subscribe and bell notification for future uploads like this, as well as tech reviews and Chris Talks and our own original short films. And I will see you guys all in the next video. Thank you again so much for watching. Peace out. Okay, I've been working like three jobs. Probably why I never see ya. Probably why I never have time for the fake friends I won't be ya. Oh God, I've been running now. Up early when the sun is out. Not setting out my own soul, but those real ones, they coming out. Oh look, who's reaching out? Old friends want to feature now. They don't work, so they need it free. Ooh.